Hey everybody, so we're going to talk about an important topic is what if we're analyzing a metric and we don't have data for every day that the metric occurs, but somebody wants to see a trend over all the days where the metric might have occurred. And um, let's say you're signing up some kind of a new customer and maybe one day you'll get 11, one day you'll get zero, some other day you'll get three, then you'll go for a week without any, but somebody just wants to see it by week for a year or something like that. So you can't rely on the data itself because you won't have all the dates in the data because you had no metric. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use a function called generate series to generate this data. So let's just do um, uh, I'll get generate series and it takes a couple of arguments. It's going to take a uh, I'm going to take some starting dates, so let's try like 2007-01-01 and uh, maybe 2007. I think these the DVD rental data we're looking at is, uh, is 2007, uh, so through December. And so we have a start date, we have an end date, and uh, the interval I guess we'll do one day. And um, this is just some syntax here. I think it's going to make the presentation better. Um, so let's see what that gives us. All right. So as you can see from here, that's just giving us every day in 2007. And um, let's just call that let's call it T. Um, and maybe we'll do. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to call that date. So it makes a little more sense there. And um, we don't care about the timestamp necessarily. Keep in mind, we're going to have to join other data to this data. So what are the odds of joining at the same exact time? That's never going to happen. So again, in Postgres, we have this handy colon, colon, date. And lo and behold, we'll have these dates. Um, and at this point, uh, you can just pretend you're writing a regular query and we can left join this to uh, payment, P. Um, keep in mind that payment has a uh, payment date, and that's going to equal to um, date that date. Now, let's just make sure it still runs. And we also need the sum of the revenue on any one of those days, so P dot amount. Let's just see what happens here. Right, we have to group by. The date and then you'll see do we have anything no and I know why we don't have anything it's because our payment date we haven't converted that yet to a um, an actual date date just like what we have on the left here once we do that we actually have a working query where we've managed to generate a you know what let's let's order by one Okay, so you can see uh, the first period here where we actually have sales is uh, 214, 215. Remember some of those customers we were looking at, their first purchase dates was on uh, February 14th, 2007. And uh, so this is how you would account for gaps in your data. And um, let me illustrate another important point here. While we're playing with the generate series function, we can actually highlight the difference again between a left join and an inner join. So remember when the left join is operating, it takes whatever it finds on the left side, which is basically our generate series for every day in 2007. And if it finds a corresponding match in the, the table you joined it to, it'll return whatever you wanted. Otherwise, it'll just return null. So most of the time here, as you can see, it's not returning anything. Um, there might actually be a trick here. Nulls last. Nah, that didn't work. But in any event, the more important thing is just understanding generate series and um, understanding that if you actually use an inner join, not a left join, you will collapse the result only to dates that are found in both data sets. That's worth repeating. Without left join, 
you reduce the results to only matching cases on either side of the join. In this case, that means we needed sales on the date. And that was our original problem is that we didn't have sales. So using this inner join will completely defeat the purpose of the exercise, but it does a good job of highlighting a left join versus an inner join. And by the way, you can write inner join. It'll work exactly the same. Um, without it, it's implicit that it's an inner join. So, um, but yeah, if you go back to a left join, you'll see that we've done a good job. We've got, uh, we've got our metrics here. And now well, let's just take it one step further. Let's uh, see how many orders we have too. Just to refresh our memory a little bit and uh, count one. Well, why is that a count one? It's a good, it's a good chance. Well, there's one row per that date, right? So what if we wanted to do only, you know, rows where we actually had more than one, which would signify that we had an order on that day? Well, here's another good chance to review the where versus the having clause. We could say, and this will not work, but I'll show it to you anyway where count is greater than one, um, and that's obviously in the wrong place. It goes after the, after the from, the where. Let's just run it, and that's not gonna work because that's an aggregate function. Remember the two strategies for dealing with this, you could use having, and I think that goes between the group by and the order by, and here we go. Essentially, you've just done the inner join on the data. Or, if we comment that out, we can use our good friend, the outer select, and we can say all from the below where t.count is greater than one, and it'll accomplish the same thing without the having. So hopefully that was a good introduction to the function generate series. Um, you can review the documentation on Postgres. There are tons of great questions and answers on Stack Overflow about how to use this but again, the main use case is your data is more sparse than every day or every week in the time frame that you're interested in analyzing the data. And this is a great, very simple way to do it and also practice your different types of joints. Thank you.